Heartbleed's probably one of the largest uh, security exposures that we've, we've ever seen, at least that I can remember in 10 or 15 years. It impacts almost, you know, almost all of the internet. David Kennedy, a security researcher and self-described ethical hacker, calls Heartbleed the bug that broke the internet. Everybody was affected by this. I mean, you had, you know, Facebook that was affected, Yahoo was affected, um, a number of companies were, you know, large companies that we put our information in every single day uh, were affected. And while companies have worked to fix it, the security flaw is untraceable, making it difficult to tell if you've been compromised. If you use the internet for any purpose, there will be an effect. Robert Hansen, also an ethical hacker, says don't use the same password for different sites. In light of Heartbleed, probably the very first thing you should do is you know, go to your search engine and type in Heartbleed check. And if you're going to go do business with a website, type in that website's name into, into that form and see whether it is or isn't vulnerable to Heartbleed. So how do hackers keep themselves safe? There's things like uh, what are called two-factor authentication, um, you know, things that allow you to have to you know, enter a password in and something else. For example, Gmail has this built in automatically. You're an ethical hacker and you know a lot about how people hack. So take me through your browsing history. When you go to Facebook, when you go to Twitter, when you check your email. I don't actually know any of my passwords inside of my head. I only know one password. My passwords are literally you know, anywhere between 32 and 50 characters long, and they're completely unique um, to where you know, you're never going to be able to guess those. Kennedy keeps his passwords stored in something called a password vault. Programs like KeePass and 1Pass for Mac are built for this. Passwords themselves are you know, pretty much a, a legacy or an old type of way of thinking. Uh, we need to move to other technologies like, you know, for example, biometric is a great one. It's, it's definitely possible from a technology perspective to say, you know, hey, I want to log into Gmail, swipe your finger, verifies who you are, and all of a sudden now you're logged into Gmail and not have to remember passwords and it's tied to this. The iPhone 5S and the Galaxy S5 now have fingerprint scanners, but both systems have been beaten by hackers. More advanced biometrics could provide greater security, things like identity by voice or even your heartbeat. For now, the internet remains vulnerable, and the ones who know it best take extreme precautions. I'm always in private mode, which means every time I close my cache, uh, close my browser, the cache and cookies are removed. Um, all ads are removed. Uh, all tracking systems are disabled. The list goes on and on. Lori Siegel, CNN Money, New York.